Hi, I'm Sean from Milano Music. Today we're going to go over taking the clarinet out of the case, putting it together, and making our first sounds. Thanks for letting me be part of these early steps in your clarinet journey. Let's get started with taking the clarinet out of the case. At this time, I'd like to suggest that you wash your hands before and after playing the clarinet. While we're playing the clarinet, we're often touching things that we put in our mouth, and just like you do before eating dinner, it's a good idea to wash your hands. So, here's an example of what a typical clarinet case will look like. The top section, the lid, is usually the smaller part, and the body where the clarinet rests is usually the larger part. That's pretty standard on most, most cases, while other parts are different. So, uh, with this case, we just pop up the latches, bring them down, both of them, and then on a solid surface, carefully lift the lid. So why don't you pause at this time and just get familiar with your case, opening and closing the lid a couple times. Alright, hopefully you feel you've got a sense of opening and closing the case safely. Uh, let's do that one more time with the top opened carefully. We're going to take out the clarinet and put it together. I like to start by building from the bottom up with the bell and then the lower joint. Here is our bell, because it looks like a bell, and the lower joint is going to have the thumb rest and is the largest section of the whole instrument. So here carefully putting it together the socket will go to the cork. We'll hold it pressing as little on the key work as possible. It can bend if you're not careful. And we'll twist and press the bell and the lower joint together. The next step will be to take out the upper joint carefully. That'll be the smaller section of the instrument with keys. And you'll notice there are two cork sections. The ones with the uh, side keys are going to connect to the lower joint. At this point, again, being careful not to grab the keys any more than necessary, we will put these two parts together, twisting and pressing. Makes it a lot easier than just trying to press it. And always remember, if it's not going together easily, don't force it. Get, get some help. Um, at this point, you want to be really careful if you look in at the bridge key here, this is the part where the key work, the metal actually bridges and connects between the two halves of the clarinet. So if you can get in here, just make sure that that part is carefully aligned. Now the last part of building the main section of the clarinet will be to get the barrel, which is the smaller part, usually in the shape of an old wooden barrel, and we will put that on the top. At this point, there is a lot more to putting the clarinet together, we'll get to in just a second, but I want to show you quickly how to disassemble it. So basically what we're going to do is exactly what you did putting it together, but in reverse, starting from the top and working your way down. So at this point, we're going to take the barrel off, again twisting and pulling this time, and put it back in the case. Then I like to go actually to the outside here, pressing carefully on the keys and body so you don't bend anything. Pull and twist, put it back. And then here, grabbing at the outside of the clarinet to not press the keys, but with a good grip, we will pull the two sections apart, carefully twisting, and back in their respective spots. At this point, why don't you pause and practice putting the clarinet together and taking it apart carefully a couple times till you get a good feel for it, then press play again. So often the first step of putting the clarinet together, uh, even though I'm explaining it out of order, is to get the shaved bamboo, the reed, the part that vibrates and gives the clarinet its sound, uh, to get that wet either by putting it in your mouth and soaking it with some saliva for a little while, or using a small cup 
or old school film canister um, of water and soaking it in for about 30 seconds while you're putting your clarinet together. Um, so why don't you do that at this time and we'll go on to how to put it on the mouthpiece properly. All right, now that you've felt comfortable putting the clarinet together, taking it apart, and now it's back together, we're gonna go over getting the mouthpiece reed and ligature assembled so that way you're ready to play the clarinet. So the next part here, we will take out the mouthpiece, leave behind the ligature and mouthpiece cap, gripping the mouthpiece carefully. It's the most fragile part. You don't want to drop it. And we're going to go ahead and twist and press just like you did before. You want to make sure though that the mouthpiece, the flat part, lines up evenly with the register key. Now the next thing we're going to do, there's a couple different ways to do this, is to actually put the reed on the mouthpiece. So I like to take it with my one hand, hold it with my thumb carefully on the bottom, and line the reed up. You want to be careful that you never touch the tip of the reed, the thinnest part. It's very fragile, easy to break. Don't feel bad if you do though, everyone does in the beginning. So line that up as evenly as you can, not on top and not below, but just right in the middle, lined up on the sides and tip. At this point, take your free hand while holding the reed carefully with your thumb. We're going to go ahead, and this is the most important part, putting the metal ligature on the mouthpiece. This is where everyone tends to break their reed. So if you're careful here, you'll save a lot of reeds. <laughs> uh, so carefully pivot that ligature with the screws facing up on some, facing on the other side on others, and carefully slide it right past where the shaved part of the reed ends and the bark begins. At this point, you're going to let your thumb off, carefully tightening the screws a little bit on one, a little bit on the other, not all the way down, just a little bit, and go back and sort of adjust here without pressing on the tip of the reed, that is no, and then go ahead and holding it securely, tighten those screws. It's a good point that um, don't over tighten them or under tighten them when you're uh, loosening them. It'll just make it easier to put, uh, put together in the future. So now we're just going to take the reed off by carefully untightening the screws, holding on to the reed with your thumb and removing the reed. At this point, pause and practice putting the reed on and taking it off till you're comfortable and we'll continue. All right, now we're gonna focus on how we put our mouth on the clarinet, known as the embouchure, and our tongue position to make the first sounds on the instrument. The best way to learn doing this in the beginning is to take off the barrel and mouthpiece from the body of the instrument. So we're just focusing on making the sound without worrying about the hands. When you do this, twist and pull like you did before, being careful not to squeeze on the keys, and then set the clarinet down on a secure surface like a table with the thumb rest down and the keys up. Be cautious to never set the clarinet down on the bell because it can be knocked over. Always set it down on the thumb rest if you need to so you can't knock it over. So now we're gonna talk a little about how you put your mouth on the mouthpiece to make the sound and play the clarinet, known as the embouchure. So the first step in making a good clarinet embouchure is to make your best stereotypical elderly person with no teeth face. Something like this. And then with your lower lip over your bottom teeth, you're going to stretch out the mushy part of your chin until it's firm and pointed. Next, we're going to take the mouthpiece and barrel with the reed facing your lower lip. You're going to take your upper teeth and actually touch them directly against the top of the mouthpiece about a third of the way down. And then you're going to 
seal your upper lip and the corners in towards the mouthpiece like a rubber band tightening or a drawstring at the top of a laundry bag. The next step is to press out with your lower jaw like you're making an underbite, just a little bit into the reed. Next, with all of that done, blow fast, relaxed air. So why don't you at this point practice by pausing the video and just putting the clarinet mouthpiece in the mouth and making that first sound a couple times and then play it again. If you're having a problem getting a sound in the beginning with just the mouthpiece and barrel, try looking through the previous explanation of the embouchure and maybe experiment with the placement of your lower jaw and your teeth a little up and down the mouthpiece. Maybe add a little more pressure or less pressure from your lower jaw and try with a little faster air. Um, Hopefully one of those things adjusting will make it so you can easily get a good sound on the clarinet. With the mouthpiece and barrel, specifically, the pitch should be an F sharp or a slightly sharp F sharp. You don't need to know what that means exactly, but go ahead and try matching your pitch with my pitch playing the mouthpiece. You might notice the, the tone or pitch being a little low or flat. To fix this, try bringing your tongue arched up into the, the roof of your mouth a bit. Like you're saying er or e. Best way to do this is just give me your best r like a pirate. R And feel that motion and shape of your tongue in your mouth. It, it should kind of curl up uh, like this is the top of your tongue. So experiment a little with that tongue position and see if you can get the pitch to match mine or be as high as you can possibly get it. want that higher pitch. It'll make playing the clarinet way easier down the line if you just practice this part carefully now. Um, so go ahead and pause the video for a little bit or rewind to match the pitch and practice just making the sound as beautifully as you can. My best advice in the early stages of practicing the clarinet would be to spend some time with just that mouthpiece and barrel trying to play that F sharp as much as possible in the first couple days before moving on to actually um, holding the clarinet and playing different notes. But once that's comfortable, let's move on to, uh, to holding the clarinet and, uh, and those first few fingerings and notes that you'll be learning. All right, so now hopefully you've gotten some experience making a good sound with just that mouthpiece and barrel. So we're going to put it back on the clarinet. So the first thing I want you to do is to take your hands and just rest them at your sides, hanging down, and just feel how your fingers naturally curl or curve. Then pick up the clarinet with your hands that same shape as when they're relaxed at your side. We're going to take the right hand on the lower section. At this point, let's get in real close. I want you to see how you put your thumb on the clarinet with the cuticle line being right in the middle of the thumb rest. And then like you're holding a racket ball, bring your fingers around and hover them over the keys. Then we'll take the left hand, and the same thing, your thumb will actually go on the hold and be able to get to the register key curved around with that relaxed shape hovering in front of the clarinet. So now that we've learned how to make our first sound 
on the mouthpiece and barrel and how to hold the clarinet properly. Let's put those two together to make our first sound using the entire instrument. That sound is going to be called an open G. The open part because you don't put any of your fingers down and the whole thing is open. So put your mouth on the mouthpiece just like you did before. Hover your fingers over like we just learned. No fingers down and blow like you were getting that good sound before. Be careful when you're playing that you don't rest your pointer finger in your right hand on the side keys. Avoid getting in that habit from the beginning. Lots of people don't. So why don't you at this time practice by pausing the video, playing an open G, taking the clarinet out of the mouth, and playing it again. When you're ready, restart the video. So now that you feel comfortable making that open G sound with the full clarinet, we're just going to quickly run through some close-ups of the fingerings for the first five notes people usually learn. So the first note we're going to learn will be open G. Still a good idea to have your fingers hovering over the holes though, ready for the next note. The next note we'll do, one below that, will be F. F will just be with your thumb over the F hole. Remember to hover those fingers over the next ones. The next note will be E. We'll put our first finger down, our pointer finger down, right underneath the A key, covering both the F hole and that first hole. Then we'll put one more finger down so you can see. Two fingers and the thumb. D. We'll learn one more note. C. With your three fingers down on the holes, thumb still down. Feel free to pause, rewind, and look at some of the different fingerings and give each one a try on its own before moving to the next. If you're having trouble getting any of these notes out, but you're still feeling good about the embouchure that we talked about earlier, try moving the finger around a little bit over the hole carefully until it fully seals all the way around, gets that airtight seal with your finger, and that should help the notes speak more easily. So I'd spend some time practicing those different notes, but I wanted to let you know that you already know all the notes necessary to play a lot of the first tunes people learn. Some melodies you might already be familiar with. Why don't you try experimenting using these five notes to play different pieces you know or music you've listened to and see if you can get close to what it sounds like in your head. If you have any questions or want recommendations on further study, please give us a call at 480-827-1111. My name's Sean and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have.